Welcome to another edition of Talking Models. Today we're going to take a look at an oldie but a goodie sculpted by Mike Hill and available through Mooncrest Models out of England. What we're talking about today is I'm sure everybody's heard of Mount Rushmore. Today we're looking at the Universal Monsters Rushmore. What an awesome little piece. Let's take a look at this piece. As you can see, we've got the heavy hitters right here. We have Frankenstein, the Phantom, Dracula, and of course the Wolfman. All uh, expected like you've seen in Mount Rushmore. They're part of the mountain, and all you can see is their faces. And as you look around, you have the mountain, and they're just part of that mountain, just like you would see if you went and seen the presidents in Mount Rushmore. A great little piece. You can see it's very compact. It's an oldie. Mike Hill did this many moons ago. And like I say, our fellows across the pond at Mooncrest Models have this available. Amazingly fast shipping. I had mine in like four days from England. It was like, boom, here it is. So of course I had to paint it. I was going to do it in a grayscale, but I decided to add some color to it. And so we're going to talk just uh, briefly about what I did with this beautiful piece today. I started by base coating the whole thing in black over the automotive gray primer. And then, of course, like I've explained before, I usually just hand brush that on with my Delta Cream Coat Black, the big bottle. But first this time I used the uh, Badger uh, Primer Black and I sprayed the whole piece. Again, invest in a Lazy Susan. I talked about that in my last video on the workbench. I just put that thing on there and just spun it around and just hit it with that black primer, covered everything. Then I went over to give them by hand with the uh, Delta Cream Coat Black. Give me a nice base coat for the paint to bite into. I started with the mountain. Pretty straightforward on that. I tried some different grays. Ended up just changing my whole game plan and I went this way. I chose the uh, majority of the paints I used this time was from the uh, Badger Freak Flex line, which is airbrush ready. Great stuff. Hit it with Gargoyle Gray and I hit the whole piece with that, just sprayed it all, covered it all, and simply came in then with my transparent black and uh, did all my shading. Just anywhere in the mountain that you see the uh, uh, shadows, if you will, I just went in there and just hit it good. Just deepened them shadows. Then I came back in with the original gray and I just dry brushed all the highlights. Anywhere that you can see the rocks sticking up in the front here, along the bottom, along the edges, anywhere there's high points of the mountains, just simply dry brush those to bring out the detail of it. And if you get a little too crazy, come back with your transparent black, calm it down. Everybody likes to be calm, so calm it down. And that was all I did with the base. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, boom, done. So we're gonna start over here with Frankenstein. He was the next one I did. And for Frankenstein, what I always like to use, imagine this, is Frankenflesh out of the uh, Badger Freak Flex line. It really looks great over black. It just, you have that black depth in there and it just makes this green just kind of pop, but not too much, you know, to scare you. Frankenstein's scary, I get it, but you don't want to overpower that. So I just simply just started airbrushing Frankie. You know, you hit the whole areas of his face. Just go light though. You don't want to just do too much. You want some of that black to remain. So I went around, hit his ears, uh, where it meets the mountain, along the top part here by his hairline, chin. Then I came in with the transparent black, began shadowing under the eyes, a little bit heavier, because his eyes have that sunken in look. You can accomplish that with the black. Around his cheekbones, because again, he had that sunken in look. Part of it's because he was undernourished. He was a starving actor, Boris Karloff, and they portrayed that, plus Jack Pierce, again, wanted to give him that sunken in look, you know, so he did things with his dentures, his mouth, just to give that cheekbones going in. 
so you want to emphasize that. So I emphasized all that, hit with the airbrush along his nose, his lips straight up black, and you just start basically shading with the transparent black. And to do that, I brought out my Badger uh, Chrome, which is a detailed brush, so any detailed brush you use, whatever your pleasure is, just come in and hit all those areas, just get in close. With the transparent black, though, if you get too close and you hit it too hard, it's going to splatter. It's a transparent. Any of them will splatter. So the trick is, is getting your finger right on there, you know, a little bit of air pressure, maybe turn the air pressure down on the compressor and just take your time. With a fine airbrush, you'll find that you'll be able to get in there for that detail work. So it was just back and forth with the shading of the uh, transparent black and then finally coming back in with the Franken flush and just hitting all the highlights, eyebrow area, nose, sides of the nose, cheekbones, above the lips, and of course the chin area. And that was all I did with that. Come in with some pastel work, with some reds for the scar, the scar on the neck. And then what I like to do is I like to just a uh, little bit of the transparent black just over the scar. Just kind of tone it down, quiet it. Shirt was handled with uh, Nair Black from the Badger Freak Flex. Over the black, it's like a gray, Nair Black. And I just airbrushed all that area on the raised areas of his shirt. And for his uh, jacket area, we came in with uh, Garage US Colors tie in brown. Love this brown. And just airbrushed the centers of his uh, jacket area. And then, of course, you guessed it transparent black. Hit the folds, kind of tone it down a little bit. And Frankie is done. So we're going to go on to the Phantom. I've seen him done many ways, uh, different colors. Uh, I wanted to go. In the original book, he had more like a yellowish skin tone. I just wanted to really punch that with that. That's why he's kind of a little bit bolder than the other three. And to accomplish that was a couple different, three different colors. You have the Pale Flesh from the Badger Freak Flex. Here I have Graduous Colors Transparent Yellow Orange. I use this color a lot. I love it. And then, of course, the Rotten Tooth Tan from the Badger Freak Flex line. So started with a base coat of the Pale Flesh. Then I just uh, did a couple uh, misting of the um, Yellow Orange Transparent. And then I came and hit all the highlighted areas with the Rotten Tooth Tan. Just to give it a different look. I punched it heavy in the cheekbones forehead, chin, above the lips, and then of course you come back in with the transparent black, kind of do the waltz, and remember from the earlier videos, one, two, three, wash it up a little bit, and then hit a lot of your folds in here with that transparent black. Go heavy around his eyes for that sunken in look. Again, with your fine airbrush, just hit these details here. You can also do washes, you know, take the colors and wash it over them and take a Q-tip and dab off the excess and you'll have all the paint runs in the recesses of the skin. Another way to do it. And it was just a back and forth process of doing that until I got what I wanted. His teeth uh, were just used with a rotten tooth tan. And I airbrushed before that. I used the uh, transparent Mars Red to give the reddish look inside of his mouth. And then hit that rotten tooth tan. His eyes... Uh, Bleach Bone Tan, which is another great color for eyes. I think I have it out here. Boom. Bleach Bone Tan. All the eyes were done with that color. And then, of course, you come in with your pupil colors. And you uh, just, whatever eye color you pick, you paint it in. Dot your pupil. And the Phantom's done. His black hair was lightly dry brushed with a gray over here just to give it that aged look and then toned down with the transparent black. And the Phantom's done. Boom, right? So then we move over to Bella, Dracula. Tried something totally different with him this time. Enlisted the uh, Badger Freak, Freak Flex Rose Flesh, and over the black, I missed it that on there. Couple coats, I went thin, and then you have to build that up. If you get, again, too close with that, it's gonna run, it's gonna be a mess. You're going to be aggravated. What's the fun of that, right? So a few light coats built up my color. Then I took that pale flesh and I mixed that with Afixia Blue from the Badger Freak Flex line. 
couple drops. That's what's so beautiful about these bottles. Just poop, poop, and you're done. Mix it all up. And I airbrush that over. As you can see, it gives them just like that blue death look, if you will. And just hit that areas with that. And then what I did is I came back in with the pale flesh and deliberately hit it heavier on the nose above the lips, the chin, forehead area, until I got the look I was looking for. And then I brought in the transparent black, quieted everything down, and just, and you'll see, it's a back and forth process. Come back in with your uh, rose flesh, hit them areas, get what you want, quiet it down, bring it up, quiet it down, until your eye says, boom. Eye color, Aphyxia Blue was chosen for the uh, blue in his eyes. Then of course you dot the pupil, I used a real fine brush in this. The toothpick, toothpick technique I taught you before would work good for this. Dip the end of the toothpick in, dot the pupil, you're done. It works. Here I just left straight up black. And I did uh, go over the black with some transparent black. I just like what that looks like over the Delta Cream Coat Black. It just gives it a cool black look. Dracula's done. His lips uh, were done with the transparent Mars red, which is this beautiful color from Jesse over Garage US Colors. I also did that below his eyes for that distress look, below the eyes on the Wolfman, and that's the colors I used like for the different areas here. It just gives it a nice, nice look. You know, Bella could have been done feasting. Who knows? And Dracula is done. Last but not least is uh, the Wolfman, one of my favorite characters from the Universal Monsters. For him, over the black, I enlisted this color right here, Freak Flex Suntan Flush. And that was the base color for his skin, both on his hand and his face. And then you start having fun, transparent dark brown from Jesse over at Garage US Colors. And you just start shading with that come in, you want to make sure you get where the face meets the hairline, you shade heavy there, around the sides of his nose, above his eyes, above the hairlines, anywhere that there's a recess in his face, you hit it. You hit it with that transparent dark brown, and then I like to just gently mist that over his face to quiet down that uh, suntan flesh, and then once you're done with that, you come in a little bit closer with your fine airbrush, punch all the highlights. And that gives you that look that you see here. And then, of course, straight up black for his snout. And the lips, same treatment I did on Bella, was done over here on Old Wolfie with the transparent Mars Red. Rotten Tooth Tan was once again enlisted for the teeth. And uh, you just start blending that all back in. It's a process, guys. You know it. You just go back and forth till you get what your mind has envisioned and your eyes tell you when it's done. So back and forth until it was finished and simply, same with the hand process, the Wolfie's done. Enlisted this uh, Delta Cream Coat Dark Brown and just dry brushed all the hair. All around here, come in real close here so you get that transition from flesh and you already put that nice transition there with the transparent dark brown, hairbrush right, or dry brush to the edge, all the way around and that's it. And that's all I did with this guy. It's a great little piece, you can see. It's not that big. Hold it up above the monsters. It sits well on the shelf. It's just a, uh, it's a great little kit to have. It's very reasonable priced. And those guys over there across the pond will take care of you. Reach out to them, order one of these, and you won't be sorry. It's a great little piece if you're a Universal Monster fan. And that's it for today's episode of Talking Models. I believe next uh, edition we're going to be taking a look at displaying your models. Maybe that's something you haven't thought about. Maybe you just have them on bookshelves. Maybe they're just piled up somewhere. And people can't appreciate your artistry, what you've done to create this. Put them on display. So we're gonna, I'm going to give you a look into my collection, both here in the studio in the man cave, show you how I uh, taken slat wall and created into a great, great way to display your kits with shelves. They're really good for wall hangers. 
You'll see that when we go over to the other side and see all my black heart model wall hangers. It's an episode you don't want to miss. And that'll be after this one. Then we are moving into black heart models and we're going to take a look at the wall hangers that I painted from George over there. He's a great guy, great company, and an amazing product. So that's all ahead on Talking Models. So why not subscribe today? Why not just uh, become part of the family and help support this channel? Spread the word, guys. I would really appreciate it. So once again, thanks for stopping in. Have a great day. And as always, may God bless your day.